What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Rippin' Packs. It is Wednesday. Yeah, I've been on vacation and I know a little bit about post-production and produ production work in general, so you could go ahead and figure that any of the last normal episodes were all shot in advance. Yeah, I know, sorry about that, but you know, I gotta go on vacation. I did edit them though while I was on vacation, so if that amounts for anything, yeah. Anyway, so what are we doing today? Well, it's kind of a recap from vacation, but it's also gonna be a what the F episode, a what the F Wednesday, yeah. I like doing that. Anyway, so what are we gonna rip today? Well, on my vacation, I met a viewer, a friend now, I should say, Paul out in uh, New Jersey, and he gave me a couple things. We hung out at a ball game, and what are we gonna rip today? Well, we're gonna rip open one of the things he gave me. We're gonna rip open a true What The F Wednesday product, 2020 historic autographs, POTUS, the first 36. 54 cards, five packs, plus a bonus pack, we might get an autograph of Abraham Lincoln or a hair follicle from George Washington. We might. Let's find out. Hi there, I'm Craig Michelson, and I just got back into the hobby after more than 15 years away. Join me as I reconnect with the hobby one pack at a time. Now let's rip some packs. All right, everybody, ripping packs on What the F Wednesday, and you know, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my vacation and then we're gonna rip open my gift from my friend Paul, the POTUS, 36, the first 36. Blaster box, five packs, 54 cards, bonus pack. We're gonna rip open this bad boy. We might be able to clone, uh, you know, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who knows? But before we get into this, you know what? Before we do even do this, click that like button and the subscribe button and the notification bell. Click all that, you know, and follow me on all that fun stuff there. Good, guess what? You're following me, you're subscribed, and guess what you didn't get? 500 subscribers, once we get to 500 subscribers, 20 packs of NBA hoops from the Dollar Tree are gonna go out to 20 random subs. If you live in LA, you know, maybe we'll go down to, uh, go down to uh, Sharky's and have ourselves a power plate. Yeah, anyway, so 20 of these going out random once I reach 500. So anyway, so let's talk about my vacation. I uh, went to my wife's uh, family's house uh, out in New Jersey, the Jersey Shore. They live actually in the Jersey Shore, uh, Bayville, a small town outside of Seaside Heights, Tom's River area. So went out there, uh, checked out a couple card stores, uh, checked out the first place I went to was the Backstop, which here is their business card if you care to look at it. Uh, spoke with uh, Rick there who owns the Backstop. Um, bought a pack. I did the rip the other day. It's the uh, pro debut pack if you want to watch that. But anyway, so spoke to Rick there and evidently um, he was the first breaker. He actually shot it all on a uh, Canon camera and uploaded it uh, to the internet. It was never alive, but it was he was the first breaker. And I, I guess I don't follow these guys, but I guess that the Blez Blez or Blez guys, whoever, um, they pretty much got their start hanging out with him and working out working with him on stuff. But anyway, he owns a card shop out there. It's, um, it's a good sized car shop, a uh, good sized car shop. Well, can I even say words today? But the thing is, I my biggest complaint was he had nothing priced, nothing priced at all. And I don't know about anybody else out there, but that's one of my biggest turnoffs is when I walk into a card store or a card show for that matter. And we'll talk about that one in a bit, but um, not having the prices, at least give me an idea where I could start from. Um, I can work my way down or I'll know, okay, well that's a little, that's, that's about, that's a fair price. I'd like to continue shopping at this place. Anyway, so went there, bought that pack. Nice guy, um, definitely one of the older crowds, if you will, so definitely he's seen the hobby at its highest point during the junk wax era. And you could tell he's kind of a little like, unsure about where it's at right now. I mean, he's making money, which is good, but anyway. And then I went to another card store, which I don't have a card on, but Father and Sons, which is in Forked River, which is actually closer to my, my in-law's house. So went out there, talked to Tyler, who works there, who is pretty much runs the shop. Uh, his dad 
owns the place, but Tyler runs it. Um, and then I went to the card store, uh, the cards, uh, the card show on that Saturday. And you, if you see, it's one of my episodes I did a couple days ago. Uh, I posted that, and just kind of a little day in the life. Um, it was it was nice to see a different vibe because I'm so used to the LA vibe. Um, you know the packed houses and there's so many people and it's not not a negative thing it's more of a way of like seeing how a small town does a card show and it was really nice I was talked to a handful of the guys at the tables um, being from LA we obviously had a nice little conversation about some things um, but yeah saw Jim Laritz I posted a little clip on that um, but yeah that was a good time um, so what I do I, I met Paul my friend Paul now, now my friend Paul he was a viewer who commented, and now we're friends, because yeah, met his wife, met his kids. We went to the Somerset Patriots game, which is right there. That is the pocket schedule, and I always grab pocket schedules when we go to games. That's the team hat. Um, by the way, we're close enough to 4th of July, so I am honoring that with the shirt, the stars, and then the Patriots, the Somerset Patriots. So it kind of goes hand in hand with also the pack of box, monster box opening. Anyway. So went there, hung out, uh, had a good time, took my daughter with me. She enjoyed a hot dog. We, we had a good time, but so I did that. Uh, then I, um, what sucks is Lakewood Blue Claws, which are now the Jersey Shore Blue Claws. They are very, they're about a 20 minute drive from my in-laws house. And they were out of town the entire time. Uh, Trenton, which is actually closer than Somerset was out of town the entire time. And Trenton is now the Buffalo, uh, which is now the Toronto Blue Jays AAA team is playing in playing in Trenton. Since the Blue Jays have to play in Buffalo, the Buffalo Bison are playing as a AAA team in AA. It's confusing as hell, I know. But anyway, so they're doing that. Uh, but that said, so I had to go to Somerset for the game. And yeah, but I went to Lakewood. I already talked about Somerset. But I went to Lakewood because um, I wanted to pick up a couple hats because you know me, you watch my show, you see I have minor league hats for everything. I have a couple Lakewood hats already, but I wanted a couple new ones. I also picked up the team set, the Jersey Shore Blue Claws. I haven't opened it yet, and we're gonna open it right now. I thought, why not? It'd be fun to, it's, it's not really a rip, you know, it's a team set, so yeah. So we have Bryson Stott, who is the Phillies' first round pick, I believe, last year. Here we go. We, I'm just going to scroll through real quick. Bryson Stott, who is the Phillies' first round. And I believe this is on the, the opening day roster. Some of these guys are already up in uh, up in AA because Jersey Shore is a high A affiliate for them. So Bryson Stott, Mike Adams. And if you want to see the back of these cards, here's Andrew Brown. I'll show you Andrew Brown. Um, so they're a nice little car, very simple. It does have the Jersey Shore uh, as a backdrop, as a part of the, but there's the back of the card. Produced by a company called Choice 2021. So it's Choice uh, Marketing. Uh, ben Brown. Again, you can probably just skip through past this crap right now. Blake Brown. So we got the the Brown boys for Lakewood, Jersey Shore, I should say. I'm so used to saying Lakewood. Chris Cornelius, an infielder for the Jersey Shore Blue Claws. Then we have Nate Fasnock, infielder for them. Vito Frisia, catcher, first baseman. Uh, okay, wearing the yellow hat. Was not a fan of the yellow hat. This hat I did pick up, Kevin Gowdy, the blue, uh, the light blue, the baby blue uh, with the red bill. It's a crab as a baseball. Then Keaton Greenwalt, outfielder for the Jersey Shore Blue Claws, probably still there because I haven't heard of him. Jonathan Guzman, outfielder. I've heard of this kid, so he's a prospect, possibly. Hunter Hearn, outfielder. See the uh, Ferris wheel? I did go on that with my wife and daughter. Yeah, I did go on it. And then Josh Hendrickson, left-handed pitcher. That's the thing is, I mean, really, they changed the name to the Jersey Shore Blue Claws because they wore Lakewood. The reason why is because they're synonymous with the Jersey Shore. And if you tell them Lakewood, every city's got Lakewood. When you say Jersey Shore, you know exactly what we're talking about. Whether it's an MTV show or Bruce Springsteen or Jersey Mike's, you know exactly where the Jersey Shore is. Herbert Iser, catcher. Nick Lackney, left-handed pitcher. They have to be exact on that. They're left-handed pitcher, not a pitcher, a left-handed pitcher. Then Adam Levert, no relation to Gerald Levert, I assume. Probably not. 
Then Hunter Mark Watt, outfielder. This might be a long episode, by the way. Just heads up. Uh, Tyler McKay. So if I was a Phillies fan, I might know who some of these guys are. Uh, then Jordani Mezquita, another lefty. Looks like he's just, you know, out there in the outfield just doing some long toss. Probably just because of his, what he's wearing. Then we have Logan Ohape, Ohope, catcher for Lakewood. Uh, Jersey Shore, it's Lakewood's, trust me, I have a certain reason why I call it Lakewood. Uh, Jalen Ortiz. Now, no clue how any of these guys are, if they're going to advance. Uh, Jack Perkins, a right-handed pitcher. And if you live out in the Jersey area, Perkins is the diner you go to. That's like a Denny's, yeah, I went there twice. Dominic Pipkin, a uh, right-handed pitcher. I don't know what building that is. Is that, is that the stadium? No, that's not the stadium. That's not First Energy Park. It's not that place. Then we have Mark Potter, right-handed pitcher, who's screaming, Gah! I just gave up a home run. Mark Potter. Victor Santos with that Abraham Lincoln toting beard right there. Yeah. Then Noah Skiro, right-handed pitcher. Again, you're, this is probably a really not a huge momentous rip right here. Cole Stobie, infielder. That's actually at the Jersey Shore. That's the beach. Uh, Jose Tortol, uh, Tortoltino, uh, whatever, Tortolero. That's uh, on the boardwalk there. And I did spend a couple days at the boardwalk. And Anuris Zabala, who looks a lot like the Abraham Lincoln guy I just pulled. Then Chris... Adamson, the manager, which he's wearing a mask right there. If you take a look right over here, he is wearing his mask, which you don't have to now in New Jersey. Yeah, well, most places you don't have to now either. Uh, Mark, Matt Hockenberry, the pitching coach. Looks like he's throwing some batting practice right there, or he's working on catching drills. Then we have the hitting coach, Rafael De Lima. Okay, that's crazy. I actually saw Rafael De Lima when I was in high school. He played for the Minnesota Twins AAA team, the Portland Beavers, the team I worked for. He was a big time prospect. Uh, never made it, but Rafael De Lima, totally I remember this guy. Then we have the trainer. If you want a trainer card, Andrew Dodgson, the trainer of the Jersey Shore Blue Claws. Then we have the strength and conditioning coach. Come on, why is there not a gym behind this guy? Bruce Pedito the strength and conditioning coach. Now, I know this is going to sound really pathetic, but when I was in high school, I would get the team sets from all these things back. I think it was pro cards and TCMA, but I would even get the team trainer autograph. That's I wanted as complete as an autograph set as I could get. And yeah, I would get that. And then the last but not least, Buster, the mascot. Uh, the creator of the, ma uh, the mascot for Buster was actually the same guy who did the Philly Fanatic. So yeah. But there you go, 36 cards. Uh, your time has been completely wasted on that, but I thought I would go ahead and rip it open for you. But you know what? I think it's time. It's time to rip open the presidents of the United States, the first 36 2020 historic autographs. Are there any in here? I don't know. 54 cards, five packs, one bonus pack. I don't know where my friend Paul got this, but when we met up at the game, he gave me a bag. And there are four boxes of T206, which I'll open uh, probably next week, uh, which are awesome. Again, thank you so much, Paul, for that gift. Uh, and then this, a perfect What the F Wednesday rip. We're looking for four red alloy cards, whatever that means. Look for historic cut autographs and historic DNA hair relics. So again, I could get Abraham Lincoln, I could clone him. And then we could have Abraham Lincoln, thanks to this. All right, let's just go. Ripping packs. Three, two, one. Let's rip some packs. Let's go. Uh, all right. Okay. Ah, very fancy. Too bad it's not a real uh, candle piece. All right, there are our packs. The first 36. Five packs and then the red alloy. Pretty snazzy right there. There's the red alloy. All right. Bonus pack, not intended. So all the packs also don't have a UPC. They have a bonus pack on them. All right, let's just go, because I have no clue we're getting. Pack number one of the POTUS. 54 cards. Let's go. 
Hopefully I pull a, a uh, Richard Nixon rookie card here. All right, we have Clayton Bulwer, Bulwer Treaty. <laughs> oh, wow. Removal of the White House stables. So this is like a trip down memory lane if I was a historian. I'm not. Thomas Jefferson. Okay, I guess that's a hit. Thomas Jefferson, one of the founding fathers of our country. That's a hit, I guess. John F. Kennedy. Okay, well, there's another hit. JFK. Yeah. Renovation of the White House. I've never been to the White House. I've been outside of it a few times and taken immature-ish pictures. Martin Van Buren. Yeah, that's going to be a fun episode. Sorry, Martin, you're not going in the hit pile. Warren Harding of the Harding Commission. Yeah, I can't remember what he did, but I'm not that. It's been a while. Then Adam Onus Treaty. Yeah, this is going to be a weird episode, guys. Sorry. And then we have Franklin Pierce. Not going in the hit pile because I'm sorry. I don't remember who you are. And Grover Cleveland. There we go. Grover Cleveland. I'm going to throw you in the hip pile because you are a great pitcher on top of me and I. Great founding father. Actually, that's not the same Grover Cleveland, by the way. Pack number two of POTUS. Historic autographs. Blaster box. Rip back, let's go. Okay, we have the Mexican-American War. I believe that took place outside of San Antonio. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that is now where um, the Alamo exists. That could be way off. I probably am. I probably am way off. American Antiquities Act of 1906. Hmm. Let's just see what it says here. Distressed over the loss of American historical sites, President Teddy Roosevelt passed the American Antiquities Act of 1906. This act authorizes the president to protect landmark structures and objects of a historic or scientific value uh, or in interest, or designate them as national monuments. During this 10 years president, Roosevelt protected approximately 230 million acres of public land by establishing 150 national forests, 51 national federal uh, bird reserves, four national game preserves, and five national parks, and 18 national monuments. Yeah, that's the Antiquities Act. Cool. Military service. Some guys. Then we have Dwight D. Eisenhower, that's a hit right there. You're gonna go into the hit pile, Mr. Eisenhower. Then we have Sherman Anti-Act. Sorry, I'm not gonna read every one of these because you will be bored off your ass if you're not already. I will personally after we're done recording so I can get my history lesson in. Uh, first impeachment trial, wow. <laughs> we had a few of those during my lifetime right now, I'll tell you that much. Uh, two presidents I saw with impeachment trials. Yeah. Calvin Coolidge. Okay, I've heard of him. No relation to, Mar relation, relation to Martha Coolidge, the uh, female director who I worked with. Uh, very, she did uh, Valley Girl, if you don't know what I'm talking about, with Nicolas Cage. Great director. Uh, gets screwed all the time because she's a uh, woman who's in her, uh, she's in her 70s now, yeah. Anyway, Calvin Coolidge. Then Teapot Dome Scandal. Okay, so that, I have no clue what that is. Maybe I'll read about it later. James Polk, James K. Polk, in relation to James T. Kirk, and the New Deal. Now, I remember this, uh, having to learn about this in high school, and I was wondering, why is it a New Deal? Well, a series of public works projects, financial reforms, and regulations tended to help alleviate the effects of the Great Depression. So, you know, in the 1930s, 40s, that's when the New Deal was established. Teapot Dome Scandal. Oh, I'm not going to read that one. Pack number three. I want some hair. I want DNA. Let's go. Good packs. I'm not going to get no hair here. We have opening, opening Japan to trade. That's great because we're still saying screw you to China for some reason. Opening Japan to trade. First pitch. Okay, something down my uh, in my world. First pitch. That's a hit. I'm sorry, that's a hit. James Madison. 
former president, right? Yeah, I think he was. Not a hit, though. <laughs> okay, first gay president. Okay, I'm actually going to have to read this one. I'll read this after I'm done with the pack. Then Dawes Act. And uh, I wonder if my friend Sean is involved with the Dawes Act. Probably not. Then Ferdinand Ward. Good old Ferdinand Ward. Warren Harding. Uh, our second Warren Harding card we pulled. Uh, but this is a different looking one. And the first president to live in the White House. Who was it? I'm gonna say James Madison. And is it? That was George Washington. Oh, George Washington never lived there. And when Adams... Okay, so when Adams was... Uh, Adams took residency. So first president was Adams to live in the White House. So there you go. Okay, James Buchanan. Whoa, wait a minute. First gay president, James Buchanan. Hmm, we may have to look at that one again. Then Benjamin Harrison. Nothing like a stodgy old white guy who was a Presbyterian who died on March 13th, 1901. Yeah, you could tell because it tells me right there. And he was also five foot six. He's like a dwarf. Yeah. Pack number four. Oh, before we get to pack number four, first gay president. James Buchanan was the only man to serve as president who was a lifelong bachelor. Perhaps his reason for not marrying at was, was that he was gay at the time and is socially unacceptable. Shh. He lived for 13 years as, uh, with Senator Rufus King of Alabama. Wow, that's Alabama? Wow, that's crazy. Alabama let that stuff happen back then. And often attended political functions together until King's ultimate uh, death, Tommy death in 1853. King was often deferred to in political circles as Miss Nancy or Aunt Fancy, which were homosexual epithets of the day. So there you go, James Buchanan did not know. But then again, I never really, I was never a big history guy. And he died in 1868. So James Buchanan, quite the front runner, I guess. Pack number four of the POTUS. Blaster box from my friend Paul. Let's go. Bring it back. Three, two, one. Let's go. Okay, we've got ourselves Pendleton Civil Service Reform Act. Yeah. Annexation of Hawaii. Thank you. I'm glad that you're part of our great 50 states, Hawaii. We have almost shot by Secret Service. Wait a minute, I don't even know. Oh, we got a small, oh, these cards are small. Secret Service, who is that? Oh, Lyndon Johnson, okay, after Nixon. Harry Truman, not after Nixon, uh, Lyndon Johnson after JFK. Harry Truman, okay, that's a hit. Harry Truman. Then we have the Dawes Act again. So yeah, you're going in there. John Quincy Adams, the guy, the first president to live in the White House. I just learned that. John Quincy Adams. Yeah. Then Warren Harding again, so we're getting some dupes. If anybody is fans of the presidents of the United States of America or any of this, let me know. I will send some your way. Public speaking. Hmm. I'm not going to read that. Uh, in fact, I'm not bad at public speaking. But there is a card about it. Then living grandson um, of somebody. I'll take a look at that in a minute. Once I pull my final card out here, which is the building the U.S. Navy. Not the Space Force, but the U.S. Navy. Founded in 1775 during the presidency of George Washington. That's when the U.S. Navy started. The living grandson. What's the deal here? Living grandson. Uh, John Tyler's uh, had 15 children. His youngest son was born in 1853 and is uh, whatever. Some kid named Rufus. One of you guys is Rufus and he's alive. Cool. Shot by Secret Service. Yeah, Lyndon Johnson was almost shot by Secret Service on protection of the recent assassination of JFK. Huh. He was out running, out taking, doing stuff and he didn't tell anybody and they thought he was breaking into the White House. Crazy. Pack number five. And then it's time for the cool red cards, I guess. Pack number five, ribbon packs, let's go. Uh, okay. 
Uh, I don't think I'm gonna get a hair follicle. Latin and Greek. Two things you're taught. I wasn't. Spanish-American War. Yeah. Fighting with our comrades. Great society. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the old Franklin D. Roosevelt. He goes into the hit pile. Renovation of the White House. And guess what? We saw you. We got you again. The Barbary War. I don't think that's an authentic picture. I think that's an artist renderization. Yeah, Barbary War. Woodrow Wilson. I want to say, was he? I, I know he had a... He's not from Oregon, but I know he had business dealings in Oregon because Wilson was a high school and it was actually, I guess it was named in his honor because of something, but yeah. Then a Holly Smoot Tariff. Uh, looks like it was a depression era bit, so guess what? I'm gonna read about it in a moment. Annexation of Texas. Well, that ended up working out for them pretty well, too, didn't it? Because Texas might as well be its own state, like California. I mean, its own country. Then William McKinley, which... Wow, he's just looking all paranoid right there. He was a Methodist, by the way. I think that's very important to note, because evidently they put the religion in the back. Methodist. Maybe that's just how politically they were. I don't know. And then the Holly Sm uh, Smoot Tariff... In the early throes of the Great Depression, which started just after months after Hoover took office, Hoover was attempting to stimulate the economy. That sounds very familiar right now. Through all means. Unfortunately, signing the Holly Smoot, uh, Holly Smoot tariff, uh, tariff while in well-intentioned, only exacerbated the economic downfall. Oh, crap. The tariff raised the cost of almost every imported goods in an attempt to raise the sales of domestic products. So, yeah. Um, hmm, good to know. Yeah. Last pack. The first four, uh, four, we have three red alloy cards and one red alloy lady short print. A first lady is in here. Let's go for the packs. Oh, come on, open them. Jeez. Okay, there we go. Okay, here we go. Red alloy. Oh, so these are like chromium. I wouldn't call them red alloy. We got a Woodrow Wilson. You already heard me talk about him, and I know nothing about him. We got our Red Alley. Uh, we got Warren Harding. Yeah, these are nice looking cards. They're definitely of that chrome vibe before the Red Alloy. Grover Cleveland. Okay, so that's going to be a hit. Yeah, there's going to be a couple of hits here. Grover Cleveland. And then our red alloy of uh, First Lady is going to be Edith Wilson. Wow, I put the Wilson double package here. Edith Wilson to go with her husband, Woodrow. Mm, feels good. But it is numbered. Uh, these are numbered. Uh, this is 17 of 699. These are kind of like hard number two. Um... And yeah, so there you go, 184, 277, and 202 of 299. So these are all kind of short prints, I guess. Um, too bad none of them are signed. <laughs> yeah, and I was going to finish it with our first pitch since this is a sports rip show. First pitch. Baseball had been growing in popularity for dozens of years and become a national obsession in the United States at the turn of the 20th century. By 1910, William H. Taft was asked to start the Major League Baseball season by throwing out the ceremonial first pitch. This occurred on April 14, 1910, at Boundary Field in Washington, D.C., home of the Washington Senators. So the first pitch, the first card of the first pitch. So there you go, ripping packs on what the F Wednesday. It's back for today. Yeah with a little recap of the vacation. So thank you so much for watching Rippin' Packs and thank you, Paul, for this. <laughs> and the T206, which I'll open in a bit, uh, a couple days or a week or whatever. But thank you again for watching Rippin' Packs. Um, make sure that you do you pledge yourself. Am I doing it right? Yeah. To the subscribe button. 
and you pledged yourself to the subscribe button, you can look down at that like button, take your hand off your heart, and press it. And after you press that, put it back on there, look up to the flag and go, hmm, notification bell. I'm gonna press that. Yeah. And after you've done all that, you've done your patriotic due diligence, you can follow me on all that fun stuff. And remember, a true patriot, like the Somerset Patriots, or the stars on my shirt, would follow me and subscribe to me. And when they do that, there's 20 packs coming their way. That's right, 20 packs. A Dollar Tree NBA hoops. There's some good stuff in here, and I promise you that. I promise you that. That is my promise. Uh, there are some good cards inside those packs. I promise you that. I, yeah. Thank you again for watching Rippin' Packs, and uh, I'll see you Friday. Have a good one.